Lounge one on one conversation. We back in the building for another finesse. Finesse? That's some shit. I don't even like the way that sounds. Yo, it's your boy JS1 to supply BBCRadio.com. Aries Lounge one on one conversation. We back in the building for another fantastic, wonderful, great, you know what I'm saying? Epic, mind blowing, you know what I'm saying? Life shattering interview. You know what I mean? I don't even like call them interviews. This conversation. This is my dog. This is my family. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Yo, this is my peoples. You know what I mean? Oh, He's nah. the reason why I try to get fresh. Because like, <laughs> he done got grown, and now he out here getting all of the... You know, we ain't going to talk about what he getting. But yo, he out here fresh. <laughs> he doing it big. Right. You know what I mean? Making ph- phenomenal, great music. You know what I mean? Well, he's an MC, R&B crooner. You know what I mean? We all going to call you a producer now, bro. Because the albums is so... So different, bro. You got your own taste and vibe. Come up with another word for it or something, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just call you a producer, bro. Let's go. Let, I think that's big right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? We got President, you know, El El Presidente Devo in the building, bro. Uh, How you feeling? I'm feeling awesome. How you feeling today? Man, I'm trying to be like you when I grow up, but I'm good. I took a shower, you know what I mean? All right, so nah. You know what I mean? I make sure I put some fresh clothes when you came in. You know, I want to make right. sure it's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Look, like I saw, I had my girl bring some fake flowers in here. She okay. was like, yo, y'all look crap in the camera. Me. Look at it. I don't even know what this is, bro. But they said, yo, I need to make sure this shit is fly for Devo. So I'm like, all right, we're going to be there. Yeah. So, all right, life is good for you? Yeah, life's going good, man. Yeah. Good. You telling me your whole life is in the studio. I was like, yo, what you do for New Year's? This nigga's like recording. No popping bottles. You ain't no, take no flights. No white no, sandy no beaches. Flights. No, no beaches. I do spend a lot of time in the studio. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I I, I respect that because I know that's how you get your money. Hey, but yo, my sanctuary. That's just, that's the place where you feel most comfortable. Yeah, pretty much. Yo, we gotta get you on the beach, yo. Yeah. Vacation. I like Go beaches. Jamaica. You know what I mean? Fuck Jamaica. Low, 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 low. Island vibes. You know what I mean? With a couple soft legs. You know Definitely. what I'm saying? Some ladies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what we need. I need Devo with the four wheeler in the tropics. That's what we okay, need. You know what I mean? I'm, I like that. You know what I mean? But anyway, we got to get straight to the business. Now, you and I have had many interviews, but you know what I mean? What I did on the radio, a lot of that stuff wasn't recorded. Well, some of it was, and I, I, we dropped some on the gram, and that even sparked our conversation to even get here. So I was just like, bro, I think we need to do this for the camera because I feel like a lot of people don't know the history President Davo, yo. Facts, they don't. They don't, yo. So, all right, first of all, born and raised in Baltimore? Yes. What side? West side, east side? West Baltimore. Ah, west side nigga. I told y'all, west side niggas be the freshest, yo. That's it. Hands down. All right, so, born on west side. All right, so, like, when you was a kid, what what type of music was you listening to? Like, like, was the family playing? Like, before you had your own boombox, your own I listened to all kinds of music. My mother listened to country music all day. Every day we ride around, she's listening to country music. Country music? Crazy. Yep, what but that's mean? what I heard. What kind I of country, heard country music? music? My grandmother listened to Christian music, church music all oh, day God. long. And uh-huh. I listened to rap music. And all my female cousins listened to R&B. So it was like I heard all of the types of music like my whole life. I remember like hearing that's crazy. all kinds of music. Though. But I want to know what kind of country people was she listening to? What? Everybody. That Every was, big country artist that was out back then, my mother was listening how, to. How them. did she get into that? I That's different. No idea. Yeah, I ain't never met a black woman that just sit there and listen to she country. Loves it. She That's, loves that's it she different, bro. You yeah. different. So I so when you started being able, you were saying you started listening to hip hop music. Like, what were the first artists that you really gravitated towards? Um, Lil Wayne. Well, like the first, the first artist that like made me really like like rapping was Bone Thugs and Harmony. Because I used to want to know how they could say so many words. Mm. And how could I say so many words? How are they even, what are they even saying? So I used to sit there and like, back then I had like a tape recorder. So I would just record it back, record it back, and then write it down inside of the shoebox until I had every word. I just keep listening to it until I thought I got it. And I wrote the whole song down, Crossroads. Yeah. So that was like my favorite song. And once I got that down, it was like, I kind of knew how to rap a little bit after that. Mm. I don't know. Like, I knew how to write music. I knew yeah. how to write bars and lines. So, like, I don't know. I kind of taught myself how to do it. So what What made it uh, just so it was because it was so fast and so intricate? Is that what kind of you like the complexity because of it? Because it was on beat. Okay. And All it right. was still fast. It was still fast. Yeah. But it was on beat. It was still and it was still on tempo. So let me ask you what about Twister? So Twister was also kind of came out in that time period. He rapped real fast. 
Yeah, but by then I was a Wayne fan. <laughs> okay. And at that time, like nobody could surpass Lil Wayne ever to me. So. so what was it about Wayne that had you go, yo, this is it for me? Metaphors. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. Remixes. Word. Yeah. That's crazy. So I, I, I and since you're a real Wayne fan, he just dropped the funeral. I don't even want to talk about that. Yeah. But I do want to talk about what was your favorite Wayne mixtape? <laughs> for um, me, it was Dedication 2. Dedication 2 was like, he's the god. I like that. No Ceilings. That's my shit. Like, Word. I love I No Ceilings. Like, I don't I know why. Like, I did my own No Ceilings. I did a President Dave on No Ceilings. Yeah. I dropped it on YouTube. I ain't even promote it or none of that. <laughs> I just dropped it like two months ago on YouTube. That's crazy. You guys sent me the link to that. I got to yeah, check that out. Too. Like, <laughs> watch the remixes for real. But I did that because of Wayne, though. That's my favorite little Wayne like mixtape series for real. So when I first... Uh, heard about you. You had your video. The video hit hit a million. But before that, I kind of started looking back, and I was like, "Yo, this dude's got like tons of YouTube videos." Right. Uh, just you in the room, like I don't know if you freestyling or were you rapping what was written. Like, what made you start doing that? What made you start going? All right, I'm gonna start making videos of myself rapping. I mean, I started that like nobody was doing that. Nobody was holding the phone up to their self like. Recording that stuff or like rapping, like doing the f- I called it Wine GTV. Mm-hmm. So that's how I started like getting known as a rapper after I was already in a rap group. Cause mind you, I was in a rap group. We all got locked up. We was young for real. So once they was all locked up, everybody caught time. I ain't catch no time. We got locked up for different charges though. Like, right. but I came home before everybody else did. And I wanted to keep rapping for real. So mm. I started rapping by myself under President Devo. Gotcha. And that's when I came back out. But I just was recording myself on the phone doing it. Gotcha. And it's like, one day I recorded I Don't Want to Be a Player like that. Did a million views on Facebook before I even like recorded the song. Word. So I recorded the song and that straight did a million views. And it was just like, I knew that was the one. Like <laughs> Every time I recorded it and dropped it, it did a million. I was like, yeah. That's insane. So I rem- all right, first time we interviewed, you said that um the comedian which we call it, like cool. encouraged cool and yeah. encouraged you to actually make the like music video version yeah. of it. So like how, all right, so it's going crazy numbers. He coming to you and you were saying like you really wasn't impressed. You was just kinda like, eh. Nah, cause he, I knew Ant. Cause Ant, like, you know, everybody knew cool Ant. Right. You know I mean? So he he was cool, man. He was the comedian. He was lit in the house city for real, and he was like somebody everybody was following, including myself. So he was hitting me up, like looking for me. So people was DMing me like, "Yo, cool, Ant made a post about you, like find President Dave or something." And he pulled straight up on me as soon as I sent him my number and was like, "Yo, I want to pay for the video shoot. I get the cars, girls, whatever. Like, I really think that you can be famous, and I'll pay for everything. I don't want nothing from it." He didn't even want me to tell nobody. Like He just was like, I want to do this. And I was like, nah, yo, let's do another song. He was like, all right, we can do that one too, but you have to do this <laughs> one, though, yo, because this is the one. Like, And sure enough, though, like he was right, though. That was the one. Like, Damn. Man, though. So, yeah. Yo, shout out to Ant for yeah, that, yo. Really There's not many that. people that really come in that genuine space and just, yeah. you know what I'm saying, really turn up for you. Sure so, enough. before... Before that song came out, had you released like bodies of work, meaning like did you put together songs and then release them as projects, yeah, or was just a yeah because I was in a group like we was high I was in high school I was in a group called YNG mm-hmm. so like everybody like my age you feel me when I was I guess like sixteen and seventeen everybody who was in high school with me they knew I knew everybody knew who I was I was like a child superstar I would say. I was sense. already rapping. For real. So stuff. yeah, we was lit. We was lit. Like we already had the buzz. Mm-hmm. We had songs that was doing hundreds of thousands of views and all that all our videos and all that stuff. But then we all got locked up. Everybody. <laughs> you feel me? So it just was like a bunch of stuff going on. And then I came home and I wanted to rap still. So I just kept it going. And that's why I came up with Freedom Up. So I always used to say that. That was like something that everybody knew, like Freedom Up. I think you still saying it. Yeah, don't I you? still say. <laughs> that's what I'm about to say. But they home now, so I don't be saying it as much. But I still say it because that's just what I'm used to saying. But are they, are they that was my rapping? reason of saying it because of them. Right. Word. Yeah. Are but they like, ra- are they rapping now? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Reds and YB, they back home rapping, doing their thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Definitely. That's what's up. So 
Or what is it like, you know what I mean, when you approach your mom and like, now do you tell your mom I'm rapping? Hey, mom, I'm out here getting these songs done, blah, 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 blah. Or was it kind of like, you know, yeah, how was like, that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I told my mother, like, to be honest, like, she ain't really, like, supported all the way until she heard my music. Mm. Like, because I used to always say I rapped. But, like, to her, it was like, David, I don't care. What did you do in school today? What was your grades? What was that like? She was being a mother for real. So she didn't really care. Like, that was okay. That was a hobby to me. That wasn't real life, like, mm -hmm. what I was actually going to do for a living. But to me, it was like, that was the only thing I could think about. So I was just like, man, forget all that. <laughs> Look, did you know I cut school and went to the studio all day? I'm trying to show you this song that I played. You feel me? So it's just like, in my mind, I'm just like, you need to hear this music, though. And That's she just crazy. heard it, and she was like, wow, like, you really make great music. Like, And my mother was, like, my manager for a while. Like, she jumped straight into the music with me once she heard my music. Like, yeah. I remember the first time you we did the radio interview, and you, your mom came, yeah. and then, like, you had your squad with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, she this is different. pretty much doing everything <laughs> for me. Like, hey, this is different. Like, mm -hmm. it's not the it's not the stereotypical situation. Like, you know what I mean? It was definitely... And, like, and you... Weren't as open as you are now, but I mean, I kind of chopped that up. Like, yo, he was kid, he was young. Yeah, and you know I didn't I mean? like interviews. I used yeah. to say that all the time. I hated interviews. Yeah, I, I don't like interview. I don't like interviews with people that don't have any real questions. When yeah. it just be the same kind same of same questions I got. Like, I, don't, I don't like the same. Questions. Yeah, it just gets freaking annoying as hell. Yeah. So getting back into the storyline. So your mother listens to music. She rocking with it. So now it's like you got full access now. I mean, well, did she let you kind of? slip on school yeah, like a little bit so you can nah, focus. it wasn't never, never. Nah, my mother wasn't that type of mother. Like, my mother definitely was, like, school first regardless to, like, anything. It was mm -hmm. me who was just, like, more so focused on the music. Right. But, like, she wanted me to focus on school, but music was really taking off for me. Like, it was really going good for me, like, as soon as I started. Right. So it made me really want to keep going for real because that wasn't, like, my passion or nothing like that. Like, I didn't want to do music. How I is wasn't it? into music. I was playing sports. I was playing football. That was my favorite thing to do. I love don't, football. Yo, don't lie. Dave, well, don't lie to me, bro. Swear, You're bro, like 60 my, pounds. So that was my favorite thing to do. Well, how are you playing football? I played like? football. That's all I did. I played football my like my whole young life. What life. position was you playing? Cornerback, running back, safety. Get out of here. Well, I guess can't nobody hit like, you because you're so small. you just running underneath everybody and around everybody. Hey, however it went. <laughs> That was my thing. You, you, get yeah, you get to that touchdown, you get to that touchdown. I got to the touchdown, though. You feel me? <laughs> Much respect. Much respect. Yeah, but like, rapping really just like came on to me like as a joke thing. Mm -hmm. Playing, sitting around, smoking with my friends and rapping about us, like what we doing. And everybody pumping me up like, yo, you might as well keep rapping. You might as well really rap. Drop a song or something. I'm like, man, if I drop a song, everybody going to be listening to it, like, playing around, getting pumped up about it, and I really recorded a song, like, <laughs> shortly after that. <laughs> everybody was on it. So was the, just, do you remember the name of it? Yeah, our first song was called Burn Up. That was when we started out. I, I linked out with three more of my homeboys, and we made a song called Burn Up, YNG Burn Up. And YNG then, Burn Up. And what does yeah. YNG stand for? Young and Gifted. Young and Gifted. All right, all right, all right. That's real. That's real. So, are you, are you gonna bring back YNG or do like a? No, uh, like we still the mob. You feel me? Like we still, we still click tight. But we on, we grown ups now. Like we on the different things, and we in real life. Like so now you can be O N G old and gifted. Man, you feel me? We still gifted, and <laughs> we, we still G &G. all working, Go and we still and a group. But we all like individual artists, right? In our own sense, though. So I think you should start the mob label. Sign yeah. all the niggas to the mob. All right. And then, you know, let's go. Like, yo, they that's your G unit Whichever right there. one of us get out the door first, we all going to get out at the same time. So it don't Man. matter. I feel like as long as if one of them get out the door, they under contract, so you ain't got nothing to worry about, yo. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> you got to be under contract. We under uh, mob ties. I like that, too. That's a record label. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Drake. So uh, the next thing, so the record comes out. You guys did the group thing. Some of the mob is in jail. The mixtape record comes out. It joins you with a million views. Now, you're not just popular in a smaller group. You know what I mean? You become an ocean. You know, there's a whole ocean of people that are finding out about you. So, tell me about the experience of going from zero to, like, a million. Like, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I'll tell you what I remember. I remember you were saying, you, you posted the video, you went to sleep, you woke up, and then, like, your phone is going nuts. Like... 
all right, is it is it fear? Are you like, yo, this might just die? Is it excitement? Like, oh shit, I'm lit. Like, what's the what's the emotion? Nah, I mean, at the time, it was just like, it was lit. Like, I was lit. I was turned up. Like, you <laughs> feel me? I was pumped. I was excited. It wasn't no fear. It was just everybody just started knowing me everywhere that I went. Like everywhere, kids. Like I had, I had the craziest things happen to me though. Like even as I was young, like having like girls crying and going super crazy, like in hospitals and diners and all that type of stuff. And their parents just looking like, "Who in the world is this kid?" <laughs> this guy's over here screaming over. Like the whole time, I'm just lit. I'm just this young little dirty little West Baltimore <laughs> nigga, <laughs> and I don't really know nothing for real. But whole time, I'm like a superstar to everybody though. So, More. Yeah, it was fun for real. So like, yeah. there's the fun side of it, and there's the dark side of it. Like, you know what I mean? There's the jealousy and the envy. There's the everybody want a verse now. Like, right. it's going from maybe one person might want a verse to like a thousand niggas want verses, yeah. and ain't nobody got no money because everybody right. want the verse for free. Cause All the niggas who ain't want give me no verses. <laughs> oh, for real? Right. Wait a minute. The there niggas. was niggas not trying to give you no verse in the beginning. All the niggas, man. <laughs> Trying not get man, verses, I don't man. want you to throw nobody under the bus, but I, I can, don't, I ain't, I can ain't guess who they were. That. I don't care enough that much for real to be doing like all that, but I'm just keeping it real. Like, niggas wasn't trying to work with me, you feel me? But everybody want to work with a nigga now, but like, you know. That, I don't, I don't, I don't, yo, yeah. I feel like the music is so dope, even before the man in views. Somebody see the kid with the videos, because yo, your, your videos was doing numbers even before the. Before the million. So I don't right. understand how somebody, if, if, oh, let me shut up. I'm old and I think number wise. Like, I'm like, I'm that. Be like that, man. And be the. So when the, when the floodgates open up, how do you distinguish between, like, how do you determine how to move? You know what I mean? Meaning that, how do you decide, all right, which show do I take? Which, which, you know, which venues do I hang out at? I do did I everything. I ain't had no beef. I ain't had nothing to, like, hide from or none of that. I was everywhere. I didn't care. I went in every <laughs> neighborhood, at every show, to everything. Every time I had a show, I was doing three shows, like, every day. Mm. Like, man, my niggas was going out all day, every day. That's like, Every lot. single day I was doing something, a birthday party or an interview or something. I was doing something, though. Every single day. And then at night, you freaking recording two, three yeah. songs a night. In the studio. Hey, wait a minute. How much time are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Why are you putting in an hour a night? You getting two hours of some sleep? Like, how, I, what's I sleep? was an early bird. I went to sleep. I used to go to sleep real early. I used to go to sleep probably like 7, 8 o'clock. What? Yeah. And well, then you'll every wake, every up like... wake up at like... i wake up at like 3 or 4 in the morning and write songs until everybody wake up. Mm. Probably go to school if I don't go to school. I cut school, go to my homeboy Red's house. We'd make more music. Go to the studio, which is right across the street from our school. So when's your favorite time of day to record? During school time. So you like you're like a daytime. You like to record yeah, during the daytime. I'm sleep at night. <laughs> Not now. Now I record at night, all night. It's different now. But like at first I was like, I never was woke at night. Everybody knew. If it was like ten o'clock you called Dave O, that nigga sleep. <laughs> he sleep. He's not straight up. Man. All right, so now that you've grown, what's your preferred time to record? At nighttime. And you, so you don't go to sleep early no more. Nah. <laughs> so let me yeah. test. When you get up twelve, one o'clock during the day, I'm talking about like when. All right, so you if you gonna work until two, three in the morning, I'm assuming you are gonna sleep until eleven or twelve. Sure. Cool. You still getting up early as hell in the get morning? Get up at six in the morning, seven yeah. o'clock. Hey. I be up. I wake up early. That's my alarm clock. Like in my body, I'm so used to waking up early. I can't go to sleep late and not wake up early. Still, like that is so. No, you're a weirdo, my nigga. And then I just be up and out. <laughs> once the sun, I can't go back to sleep in the daytime. Once it's sunny outside, that's so, like that's weird. Yeah. That's just really weird. So you drop the joint, million views, doing shows everywhere. What's the turning point where, all right, so at, at what point did it become something where, all right, I need to start forming a team around me, you know, because you're generating income, obviously, you know, you're able to afford studios. Did you start building a studio in your house? Like, what's the first major moves after all of the, the money starts to roll? No, at first I wasn't paying for studio time. I ain't paid for studio time for like probably like the first three or four years that I was rapping. 
God so bless. Like, I ain't never know how much the studio costs. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different you thing. You feel me? So I just was. I, uh, it was it was alright. I, I ain't once the money start coming. I mean the money. I could have been getting more money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like I was doing all of them shows, but I was doing them for two hundred dollars. I probably ain't do a show for three hundred dollars. I probably did the most was two fifty or something like. Wow. I was I didn't know I didn't know nothing like and I was like I was young you feel me like, and I ain't care I was doing three shows a day <laughs> that's six hundred I wasn't spending six hundred dollars a day anyway what? you feel me so it wasn't like it didn't matter to me for real. I had money as far as I was concerned I was up right you feel me so like, I was supercharged you couldn't tell me <laughs> shit for real you feel me? until I realized like that's really not no money I could have really been getting a lot of money you feel me? but at the end of the day it is what it is man you know, like, live and learn the lesson but you know. so alright so at what point did you so do you have a home studio now yeah kinda yeah okay I got a studio that I would prefer to record at I wouldn't consider a home studio cause I would say a home studio is where I could just go and record whenever I want for free Word. Whether it's for free or not, but I could just go in there whenever I want. Like, yo, I need to come in the studio, and I know I'm going to be able to get in there. Right. It's like a home studio for me. To me, I look at it from the perspective of being an individual that gets up early in the morning and writes, and is such a creative. You seem like you spend a lot of time in your creative space. I would think it would be like, yo, I got to have a home studio, because what happens if you wake up with that inspiration to I want to create this. No, I just got two favorite studios that I just call up and I just feel like they can just lock you in yeah. anytime. Okay, so what was the first industry artist that you worked with that you did like records with? Um, I don't. I ain't do no man. Artists like local, the industry local artists. people, like you know. What I mean, was it Moose or Scooter or Oh, um, shit. Who I did a song with first down here. I was like rapping. I guess like the outside of my own clique. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be probably Moose. Mm. Yeah, I did a song with Moose. We did Rainy Days. That's what I'm saying. Like Jano, but I was hanging with Jano. That's my own boy. Jano, we did like no other together for real. But right, I did it with song with Moose. I was supposed to do a song with Scooter. We always man, Scooter always either like seeing each other coming in the event or coming out of the event. Mm. It's the only time I ever used to see him. Like, yeah, so we just never, dap it up. Yeah, you feel me? Like, holler at each other. Like, yo, we got to get up. That's all it used to be every time. Like, yo, we got to get up. All right, we have to get up. Yo, we keep seeing each other, but we never get up. And then, you know, he passed. So, like, yeah. But other than that, I did the song with Tech. Mm-hmm. I ain't really did a lot. And then I did the shit with Izzy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't really. I did Tate. Of and course. Tate. Yeah. Man, I pretty much worked with a lot of artists. I ain't worked with Scola. I haven't worked with who else? YG, no, I did YGG Tay. I dropped the song with YGG Tay. So who, not going to say they better than you, but who would give you the most to make sure you you would have to, all right, let me make sure my bars is on point, on point. Who do you feel like gives you the most challenge or challenges you the most in the studio? Oh, uh, nobody. What? I don't be challenged. That is the ego. I don't got hell. no challenge. Ooh. I don't have no challenges. All of my challenges that I always, like the people who, I, who I've worked with that I thought was like more lyrically inclined than me, mm-hmm. like from my own thoughts, it wasn't a challenge for me. When I got in the studio, it was just like. It's an adjustment. I was like, oh, I, I'm really that for real. <laughs> so like as far as I'm concerned, until I get in the studio with somebody who made me feel like that, and I'm going to be honest about it. If they if they got me on my toes, they got me on my toes. And to be to be honest, the only person that really was close, like really on my ass, was Tate Cobain. That nigga can rap. Tate Cobain wow. can rap. You feel me? Like he wow. can rap. That's what's up. But That's other than up. that, like I don't be nervous. Like and it don't be hard for me. Like everybody who been in the studio with me know how I get. Like I rap my ass off. Niggas be like, man, that shit was written. Shit don't be written, bro. Yo, when, Shit out the dome. When we talk about, like, MC, MCs in our city, that the list gets small. You feel me? Like, it gets real small. And I really, I be wanting to have certain discussions, but I know everybody gets, it getting a bag or they emotions because I'm looking at, like, yo, lyricism. Like you said, like, there's bars. There's the, there's just so many elements that come into making a goat record. 
and making it make sense. And it just, you know what I mean? Because people can make nonsensical shit all day long. You know, any, mini, money, mo. you know, red, blue, green, yellow. They will be, you know what I mean? But like, yo, I hear, I, when I hear tech songs, YG tech songs, when I hear yes songs, when I hear yeah, Tate tech, songs. Hard, tech can write too. Yo, Tate, tech is a lyricist on another. Yeah. He's in the whole space. But like you, tech, Tate, um, yo, Moose is becoming a yo. Y'all yeah. did a record on your reloaded don't get me joint. Wrong, all, all, yo, I only Moose did rappers in. who I felt like was was I ain't rapping anyway. You feel me? Because right. I don't really like a lot of people in music. I like good music anyway. Right. You feel me? So I don't listen to like I'm not really like. Chances are I'm not even really like familiar with a nigga music if I don't like it. That's a fact. And of course, I ain't listening to it. I've been bragging like about you, the you and stars joint. That's my that's my everyday. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like I feel like layups album was just whew, that's just a fucking classic. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying. Stars is a monster. On, no, yes, the, that's a he on a he in a different stars, planet. Yeah, bro. stars on a, another way. <sighs> He's a monster out here. So <clears throat> I want to get back to the timeline. So you you know let's see what is it that happens. What's the first album, the full body of work that you drop after? Uh, the the video drop. Um, and what was the public's response to that? After I don't want to be a player, I probably drop underrated. Correct. I dropped underrated. Then I dropped underrated two Then three point right. oh. Yeah. Those but they loved underrated. Like everybody loved yeah, underrated. underrated. All the underrated, even like the first ones. And I wasn't. I ain't have good like recording shit. Like I listen to it now. I go back and listen to it, and I just be like hating it. Like <laughs> shit. I wish I had a good studio. Like, or if I knew like what I know now. Like, I feel like in those days, I feel like you were trying to figure out the format of what. Like, what yeah. is Dave O and, and what is Dave I didn't Dave know album. my voice, like how I want it to sound. Right on a track for real. And I think you was focusing mainly on lyricism. Yeah, like I was. now it's more I was. about the creativity. It's more about, like you said, well, what can I do with my voice? Yo, I can sing, so all right, I'm gonna have this type of record, that type of record. Whereas, like, you have more variety in the songs versus back then. It was just more like attacking, attacking the beat. Fact. Now, I, this is really important. What is it that makes you decide I want to use a track? So, are you a person that's really in the melody? Is you is it just bass? Is it drums? It's like what is the it? melody? It's just the song. I don't know. Like if the shit catch me, it just catch me. Mm. Like I've done most of my songs, including I don't want to be a player. Like which was I was just literally walking down the steps at my own house in his basement, coming downstairs, and that shit was on the commercial and BT on BT James. I remember that shit. Like mm. and I was like, oh, I'm about to write to that. That's that I don't want to be a player shit. That shit be rocking. I'm about to write to that. And that was just it. Like, that's how I'd be. Like, once I hit and it catch me and I got some words to it in my mind, I'd just be like, oh, I'm going to go from right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be able to say something like this on there. That's going to be hard. I'm gonna just, and I go from there. But so, it just be like that, bro. That's insane. I don't think you understand how insane that is. How many people that spend so much time writing songs and for you to just be like, oh, I'm coming down the steps and I got this thing. And you throw it together and then you throw it out. And then it's just that it goes crazy. Even know. even when you look at your albums, the albums come out like when you when you did the first half and half, and then you did the whole campaign around the city. Like first of all, you bringing out mad massive amounts of people, and for you, I, when I listened to the album, I was like, "Yo, do you know how many artists I know that try to sing and they are shit bag? I know some singers that's doing R and B straight. It's trash." You do it and you do it well, and then mm -hmm. you killing them. You barring them up on top of it, like that's you're annoying. How good you are! Just want <laughs> you to know that you're freaking annoying. You know what I mean? And you still young. Thank you're like you. you're like a baby out here, man. God damn, I'm a baby goat. <laughs> you're a baby goat. Yeah. I'm with that too, yo. Baby goat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So you've gotten how many albums? Is it underrated? Underrated? Underrated two? I don't um, know. You got forever. You got... Uh, underrated three. Underrated three. My bad. My bad. Hold on. We had seven, six, seven. And then we got uh, half, half and half, half. One and half and half reloaded. So that's Undeniable. nine. Undeniable. Bam, bam. Damn, bam, bam. Like, yo, we have like um, 11 joints right now. Yo, we got a nice catalog. I got a lot of shit. You got a lot of <laughs> shit. Are you moving around? Like, yo, I, I'm hearing you got another tour going around the city. Yeah. Have you been doing a lot of out-of-state moves? 
Yeah, I've been I've been working on some. Hey, I'm working on some things, man. What? I, I ain't gonna talk too much on it because I don't I don't like spoiling stuff. No, no. Hey, but this is going you. down. It's about to get lit. We're gonna turn up. Yo, okay. Yeah. And I love that we at this point because Shorty Shorty just got certified platinum mm-hmm. for bituary. Uh, yeah, like, you know, what I mean, offside of him and what he does, the fact that an artist from Baltimore. Does a million records? How does does that? How did that make you feel when you see that? Was you like, damn, I should have been me? Or nah, was it like, I, know. I was happy. <laughs> like, I'm happy for the city. I mm. want the city to win. That's going to shine light on us. Like anybody who heard me, like me. So like, I don't, I don't do like, I don't know if you seen that uh, QCP interview where he say niggas be career watching and pocket watching. I don't be mm. career watching niggas. You feel me? Like. I'm happy for y'all. I'm happy for anybody who came from any type of struggle, like especially Baltimore. Because mm. you got to really live in Baltimore to understand how crazy it really is here. Like, you can say it all you want. People can, it's hard to make somebody believe in it until they really see right. how it is down there. But at the end of the day, you make it out of here, I salute you. You feel mm. me? But I'm going to get out. I ain't worried about getting out. I don't got no doubt in it. You feel me? None of that. Like, great things come to those who wait. And as of somebody, I honestly feel like you're already successful. You you have a fan base. It's real. You have you have a body of work. You know, you've not a body of work, but you have a catalog with multiple bodies of work. You are able to live the life that you want to live, bro. You you got fresh sneakers on, fresh clothes, you smoking good. It's 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 not nasty. I'm enjoying it. I don't even smoke weed, but I enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like you're already successful. Like how what if if I'm in a board meeting and I can give you anything you want, I'm like I'm gonna offer you ten million dollars, but I need to know what is what, what am I giving you this ten million dollars for? What would Davo do, you know what I mean, with the national, you know, the engine behind him? Like yo, is it is it just we gonna go crazy and drop albums every week now, or is it uh, you want to see the touring? Is that the first thing you want? Like what what's the what's the big goal for for D, for about to say uh, Davo? I mean. Well, the main, my main real goal of, like, even rapping is to, like, it's all, like, based off the same things for me. Like, so it's just to get my family out. Mm -hmm. So, like, the tour and everything, I want to do everything that come with rapping, you feel me? But all of it is really only for one thing for me. Like, that's all I really focus on. Like, once I get all my money, I'm just going to take everybody that I love away from here. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because... This is one of them places where you can't even be like, well, I ain't got to worry about my mother or my daughter and no, none of that. Niggas is killing everybody. Right. You can't you can't even worry about none of them. Or your little girl cousin who don't even be in no business or nobody business. She live out the county or something. She can get killed. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? It's that, that type of place. So I want to take everybody away like that I love for real. Like That's my goal, Like to have like a big-ass fucking apartment complex type of land or something where all of us live at island or something that'd be hard you know? so that's my goal with all my money that's what it always been for real music. so you ain't never had the, the bugatti goals or the nah. the big plane i'm gonna have all of that that's all gonna come with it that's not my that's not my dreams that's not what I, i'm looking for though i'm not rapping to come rich and have nice things for myself Word. i want to take everybody with me like all together is when when you step into the studio are you thinking i want to make a song or do you think i have a body of work i want to create you know what i mean like are you the type of person where i don't think it just come out like if you see me in the studio i just be going crazy and looking at the dj i mean at the a and r like how did i even say that like like he said it or something like i don't even think about the stuff i say like it'd be amazing me i just be like what the fuck like I just rap, bro. Like, I don't know. Like when I hear something and I just want to say it, it just come out. Nobody can be in the studio like you should say this or say that because I'm not gonna say it if that's not even what I thought. Because I ain't even thinking about what I what I am gonna say. Word. It just came out by itself. That's I just insane. rapped it by itself. I don't know who the fuck rapped it. Yo, you a weirdo, dog. Man, and know. I'm still jealous. You're not making me feel any better about me. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be the man here, and you coming in here with all of the the natural God-given talent. It's all that's my talent. That's what it is. It's my God-given talent. 
Word. I, just, I just can't rap. That's what's up. So, so like, you got big things in 2020. You know, the stuff you can't talk about. You know, the the the, the reloaded is, is dropped. It's out in the streets. You can stream it now on all platforms. Yes. I'm going to do your promotion for you because I know you're yeah, tired of doing it. Definitely. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Is there any merch available? And is there a place where people can... Um, like, I see you got the shirt. You know what I mean? Not yet. I had um, merch available. But they sold out. I ran out and I need to get some more. But I kind of <laughs> been working on a lot of other things. But I'm going to get back to it. Can we get the President Davo Ashtray? Let me do that. That that's, be lit. That's, that's your thing. That'd be lit. That's a great you're idea. Really, you're really into the, just... the, 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 you know what I mean, the herbals. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, yo, if I was to buy anything, I would like to buy a the Davo Ashtray, Ashtray that makes or, a lot of sense. or Davo Rolling Tray. You know yeah, what I mean? Look, yeah, I like that. Nice rolling yeah. Tray like that. yeah, I'm a huge currency fan, so I got two. I got the small one and the big one. Yeah, that's so, nice. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, just stuff like that. I think that, that works with your, either that or, yo, this would be the funniest shit ever. You need to find, like, you know how they got the fake tattoos? You can get them and you can have, like, oh, get some Davo tattoos and you can yeah. put the tattoos all over your body. <laughs> These are great ideas. <laughs> Just, I think that shit would be fun. Because yeah. I know a lot of little kids that they that love definitely. you. And they all want to get yeah, tattoos tattoo. like you. All right, so when did you get your first tattoo? How long ago was it? How how young were you? Don't even lie. I think I was... No, nah, I, I don't know. He was lie. probably like 12. I was like, like 10. Nah, hell no. I was like 17. Or about to turn 17. 16, 17. One of those ages. Nah, I don't know. Like, I wasn't. My mother wasn't with none of that, bro. <laughs> my mother was not with it. Like I, ain't, I don't yo, sit up here in front. Like my mother was. My name. mother was tough on us. Like you feel me? Like Word. at the end of the day, she had let me get it for like my birthday or something. Okay. And it was like a whole half a sleeve. But then I wasn't supposed to get no more tattoos. That I wasn't supposed to do. <laughs> I used to get in trouble for that all the time though, because I couldn't stop at that. Right. I snuck and got my stomach tatted. <laughs> I started going crazy. I got my stomach all hit up. <laughs> By the time my mother seen my stomach, she seen my stomach because I had got like this little thing on my neck. And it was low on my neck. I kind of thought I was going to be able to like cover it up because I used to wear collar shirts to school. And they used to cover it up. But she saw it one day in the house somehow. I forgot. And she just seen my whole like stomach and everything. And I was hit. And then out of that. I just she just gave stop. up and you was just <laughs> yeah she couldn't stop me yeah I can't say <laughs> so how long did it take for you to go from the half sleeve to yo your whole front I think your your I whole did back it is no not my back yet but everything else my legs so oh, wait a minute I in the span of four years you no, know I did that in like a span of two years I did it real fast like I got a lot of tat all my tats are like old. I got all these tats. And then I bought a tattoo gun. So I did like hell of these tats myself. There's oh, my mother. Oh, name oh, 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 oh. You bought a tattoo gun. Yeah, I did my last and myself, started all that. And started tattooing yourself. Myself, yeah. Bro, you got myself. way too much free time on your hands. <laughs> I was doing a lot. I was doing all that. The whole summertime. Like over the summertime while I was out of school, I was tatting myself. You got you still got that tattoo gun? Nah, I don't need it no more because I started. I was rapping and people wanted to, to tag me for free. I, I'll give I'll give you some bread so I can get a, that Davo tattoo. I just want mm. yo, I'm gonna have you do something simple. Like, yo, give me a, like a whack ass cross or something, yo. But just so I could brag and be like, nah, nah, Davo, Davo did that right there. <laughs> that's lit. That's lit to be like, yo, Davo did that, yo. You see, you see it? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was up, yo. Like, yeah, hey, can't be no like initials and that. That's possible. So anyway, like I want to ask you a couple questions pertaining to, like, the history of Baltimore. Yo, don't feel pressure or nothing. If you don't know, you don't know. If you do know, you do know. Right. You know what I mean? No pressure. No pressure at all. First artist from Baltimore that you remember hearing, whether you liked it or not, I'm just saying you heard it. G-Rock. G-Rock. My nigga. All right. So, uh, where did you hear that? Was it in the neighborhood? Was it a CD? Was it on the radio? Was it in somebody car or something? We probably listened to it on Spin Roll. I used to bump that shit. He had dropped that song or something. And it's like the intro on one of his mixtapes. Everybody was bumping it. That was the one. That, that's how I really got familiar with him. That's hard. Damn, but, yeah. And then after that, did you did you go, I want to hear more? Or was it just kind of like, oh, it's a Baltimore nigga. Yeah, he's pretty good. No, like, I listened to that song, but, like, I didn't listen. I listened. I heard our music of them they, as they was playing it, but, like, that mm -hmm. was the song that I liked. That just stood out to you the so, most. So, yeah, I bumped that. That was the first artist that, like, I remember from Baltimore. Wow. 
And then from then comes, you got G-Rock, then Tech, because Tech was doing stuff with G-Rock at the time. And then, I'm, of course, Scooter, and then Moose, and then, okay, so your generation, all right, what does, see, that's what I'm saying. You live in a, such a different time because you guys can look at each other as profitable full-time artists because all of you have been able to create businesses out of mm. what y'all do. Most moves got OTM and you got the mob and then this person has this and that person has that. What, how does that make you feel? Do you all, because in my generation it was, we need a scene cause we didn't have, or we need to find a way. But for you, for you, for, for your generation, y'all found a way. And like, right. shoot, I remember sleepy. They just posted that they bought a building and they're building a studio. In it. And I'm like, yo, that's, I just feel Dope. like we gonna make it better for the ones that's under us. Cause like I ain't like I said, I ain't no I ain't had no Baltimore rapper to like look up to or follow after. Right. Like who made me wanna rap or be like, Oh, we can rap or we can make it out of here. Cause right. you're doing it for real. Like even though like I said, I heard G Rock, I wasn't like a nigga who I wasn't a big G Rock fan. You feel right. what I'm saying? I didn't listen to G Rock all the time. So I ain't really know him as much, you feel me, or know his music as much, but I did fuck with that song. You get what I'm saying? Right, but at the right. end of the day, I wasn't really into Baltimore music. I ain't know Baltimore music. I ain't know, like, who Tr- Tim Trees was, like, who the niggas, like, I know now. I don't even really, like, I can't put a face to Tim Trees now. I right. know he made that song right. that everybody be bumping on the radio, and he, like, was like one of the older like Baltimore rappers, right? And but, then Mully Man and Boss Man, yeah, and Boss and, Man, and you know what I'm saying, Hundred Grand, Hundred Grand Man. Guy. That's the OG. Same you know what Hundred Grand look like? Yeah. Like Hundred Grand, my guy. <laughs> yeah. I know Hundred Grand. That's my OG for real. Like yeah. you know what I mean? He be around. I think I feel like the difference is like people like Hundred Grand Man. They they are ever present in our scene. So like when big events happen, he there, he fresh, and I feel like he does a lot of mentoring of the younger dudes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That people coming up. And next question, is there any been anybody in the local scene that you can honestly say that wasn't an artist that gave you help or oh, help open up doors? So I think you mentioned not you I don't think I know you mentioned um uh, the comedian, uh Cool Lan. Right. So I feel like that was a huge moment. Was there anybody else that was just like, yo, I don't want nothing from you, but yo, hey, I I just want to give you opportunities or try to help you get to another space. ratchet up until like i mean like not saying like up until now because like i could name people now but back then like nah not really Mm. so like you learning the game and figuring out your processes and what to do when to drop an album that was kind of cultivated on your own yeah i I learned all i learned all of it on my own how to upload albums everything i taught myself how to do all that shit damn that's crazy do you once again? Do you know how weird and unusual that is? Because yeah. you know how many people DM me on a regular basis asking me, "How do I get my music going?" Blah or how do yeah. I do blah? For you to do it on your own, it's own not emails. normal, Davo. Yeah. Everything you saying ain't normal. This is weird, bro. You so good I at had, the rhyme? So you good at the singing? You out here doing this shit on your own? Yeah. You're not normal. Just trying, man. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Yo, I'm just letting you know, bro. Yo, you're not normal, nigga. You're a special motherfucker, man. Something wrong with you in a good way. Thank right. God for you, yo. You you just a different Appreciate you a different it, animal, bro. You right. a different animal. Yo, that's why I fuck with you, yo. So, all right. Uh the last thing. Is there anybody on a come up that you think, yo, these are some dope young niggas. I, I look forward to seeing what they do with the music. As far I mean, as local. Like, yeah, like <laughs> a lot of people for real like Money Jake like Tony next to Bo mm-hmm. you feel me like uh Genghis especially all my niggas you feel me like um name drop name drop YGG Genghis North East Reds you yep, yep. feel me YB 2K Bands you yep, yep. everybody up out of here like definitely Jano 410 Jano you know he yep. in Atlanta now you know definitely Young Moose Hope all of them get out of here. Like everybody that's working, I, I salute everybody. Like I don't really know everybody' name. I know of rappers. Like you can name a couple people, like the kid Breeze and then for real. You can right. name all of them who got hot songs now. And like, I know like TMC the Don. I don't really know a lot of them personally. 
Yeah, how wild. You just named like here. 15 dudes, my nigga. Mm. You can't. Well, like, I don't know, know all the niggas' names. Person. Nah, you don't have to know them, yeah. but if you see them online, like, everybody. Them, like, yeah. Should, I hope they get out of here, like. Word. Like, but there's I, a lot of artists though. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's a fact. That's but, really only like a little tiny bit. There's a lot of niggas that's rapping right now. I tell people though, but like on the platform that you're on, and the, even in, in the space that I'm in, it's hard for me to see everybody because right. like we all got our we all got our blinders on trying to run our own races. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's kind of insane for people to feel like, oh, you didn't see me. Like yo, I'm trying to do what I gotta do. You know what I mean? Oh, it's not the same thing. Last thing, and we out of here. You know what I mean? We have. I'm gonna end on a solemn note. You know, I want to talk about the the recent deaths. You know, um, uh, the first one that that hit me personally was, you know, um, was Nipsey passing last year, mm-hmm. and then we had Kobe, and then we also had locally we had D Day. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, we had a few deaths from Baltimore last year. I just can't remember them all. But I think most recently was with those three. Um, <laughs> what's, what's your what was your opinion about Kobe's death? You know what I mean? Like, are you a, first of all, you a big basketball fan? No, I'm not a big basketball fan. Okay. Um, I did like um, I guess like I know, of course, I mean Kobe was right. You know of so course. yeah, I liked when I thought of basketball. I liked Kobe. I did used mm. to play basketball and say like Kobe, like be the lowest <laughs> shot, do all that, like how all of us grew up. You feel me? So of course, yeah. Word. I was a Kobe fan, I guess. And then um, we can combine Nipsey and even uh, uh, D. Dave together. Like uh, once again, being a professional artist, you know what I'm saying in this space. Like and being, you, I don't, I never have put you in the lane of being a gangster artist or whatever. I always felt like you were a street nigga. You came from All the street right. the same way I did, and you might, under, you might understand street politics. But, like, how does it make you feel, like, when you see these things happen with people that had positive things going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, D-Day was really on to come up. You know what I mean? But, like, Nipsey was doing, you know, phenomenal things. But it just seemed like street culture kind of took them away early. Like, how does that make you feel, considering the fact that you have to play that, that you got to juggle that fence yourself between right. being, oh, man, I got homies that's over here, but then I got to I gotta exist over here. Nah, to be real and to be completely honest, it don't really make me feel no type of way because I'm not like, I just hope like, I feel like I ain't survived this long off of being moving no certain type of way. So I'm going to move the way that I always been moving and make sure I survive as long as I can and take care of what I need to. Like, rest in peace to everybody with lives were lost. But like, I don't feel no type of way in that they died or when anybody died, for real, for real. Like, I barely cry when people I know die. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that died. So like, Agreed. it just don't like affect me personally. In the same way. Fact. You feel what I'm saying? Word. So like, I don't know. Hmm. I don't really know, know them personally. So definitely. It, do, it doesn't really. All right, I hear you. All right, so uh, advice on for artists coming up. Like, if, if if an artist decide or a person decide, I want to become an artist. What are your recommendations? What are what are the first five important steps that you got to do? I mean, straight get a song that you like. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's a song that you like. Go to a really uh, a professional recording studio. These are great advice right now. Drop a professional video for it. Mm. A really dope professional video for it. Mm-hmm. Go hard in the clubs. Mm. And go hard yourself. Like, nobody is going to believe in your dream more than you. You got to really push it as hard as you want anybody else to push it. Agree. Agree. So, agree. You're not going to push it hard. Anybody else going to push it hard for you. That's so, a fact. Get a song you like. Go to a nice studio. Record it. Get, get a nice video. Nasty. Nice video. Put it in the clubs. Meaning, go take it hard. to the DJs in the club and yeah, the DJs get and them to play hard. it. Right. Invest in yourself and right. go hard. Like, go stupid hard. Harder than you ever want. Word. So, uh, what I need y'all to do right now is make sure that y'all lock in with my man, President Davo. You know, I'm going to his, his Instagram. What's your Instagram? President underscore Davo. Boom. And your YouTube channel? President Davon. You got damn right. And then uh, is there a website where they can purchase like physical CDs or merch or anything um, like that? Go to presidentdavo.com to keep tuned with everything. Actually. Word. That's what's updated on. all the time. Presidentdavo.com. Tune Word. In, man. 
And yo, his whole catalog is on all streaming networks. All streaming platforms. So make sure y'all do that. All right, we check y'all next time. This is your boy JS Wanna Supply, Aries Lounge. We out.